Welcome to Goalie Science, the podcast that bridges the gap between goal sending, science, and peak performance. I'm your host, Jamie Phillips, a former professional goalie, currently pursuing a doctorate in physical therapy and specializing in goalie performance coaching. Joining me as always is Dr. Ben Cernick, a seasoned goalie coach and sports analytics specialist. Whether you find yourself at home, on the road, or at the rink, grab a cup of your favorite beverage and let's drop the puck on this week's episode. Jamie, you're back. Beth, it's been a while. I've seen, I mean, I, I know we're every two weeks now, so I appreciate everyone, everyone's understanding. I didn't, I wasn't on last two weeks ago. Oh, it's, been a, it's been a while, like, man. Like about a month, man. You've been busy. Busy's good, though. Oh my gosh, you're so busy. I'm almost, I'm almost, I'm almost less busy, which yeah. is a pretty good feeling. Yeah, it is. It is. But when you're listening to this podcast, which it will be Wednesday, 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 the 17th of April, 17th, at 12.30, I will be done my clinical rotation. Mm-hmm. I will be one study submission away from being Dr. Jamie Phillips, DPT. Um, so yeah, so that's actually really kind of exciting now that I say that out loud, but yeah, can't wait. But Ben, enough about me. What about the yeah. pads in the background? If you're watching on YouTube, Ben has some pretty sharp looking Bauer pads in the background of his, uh, of his office. These are like, yeah, these are the pads I were in college. Um, and they are not holding up. You would not believe that, but they... you're telling me that those eight year old pads aren't holding up. Um, yeah, they're not. I have a few comments, although, cause I had to buy new skates this week. Um, or last week I should say I bought new skates for I don't know if you heard of this, but for people who don't know this, sometimes um, pros and college goalies will not get the top level boot. Back in the day when there was cowlings, people used to get the model down boot because it was so like dirt. Uh, yeah, so it was it was softer, and so I did that for a long time. I would always get the top end cowling and then the, the second from the top boot because I like I have very sensitive feet. Anyways, where I'm going with this? Had my new skates. I got, this is, this is no free ads. So, um, but a free ad, I got the, like one below the top end true skates, Mm. the skate technology, I mean, it's off the charts. I was out playing in my eight year pads with my brand new skates. Mm -hmm. Honestly, my overlap to RVH transitions were prime Bobrovsky. That's all I'm going to say. It's funny because like, I don't, maybe I'm just in my own head and I feel like every old guy gets, says this, but sometimes when I demo skating drills, I, I'm way better than I was when I played. And I guess like, I'm just skating a lot more. I, I, I don't really know. I, I don't know, but maybe I'm going to come back. I don't know. My leading theory, my leading theory, entirely a theory, no doubt to substantiate this whatsoever, is that if, you know, if we're on the ice as coaches, let's say 10 to 20 hours a week on our skates as coaches during that time. Think about just how many pushes you do relative to how much time in practice when you played, you would just stand there. <laughs> so like, many, I know. so like I was also skating, right? Like I was out skating three times last week, first time in first time stopping pucks in five years. Um and a couple of those skates were like junior high like junior ish age group skates. And uh you just stand there. Like pucks just hit you. You don't even really skate. So I think that's a big part of it is we spend so much more time demonstrating skating and doing skating stuff. Where my, cat get... is, my cat is going absolutely insane. And I'm not, I'm not cutting this out of the podcast. My, my cat is my, my baby. And he is, he, I can tell you what, the logo behind me, there is a, uh, a cord because it lights up. The cat, he likes that cord and he has torn it off the wall before. So sorry, sorry to interrupt you. My point being, practice why it's actually a lesson here why you need to do extra goalie power skating why you should do extra skating as a goalie is because typical standard practices do not let you actually skate enough right and that's also why like mine when you do a goalie skate whether well it's actually all my goalies kind of maybe they complain but i make them do it anyways we do like 15 to 20 minutes of skating you got it it's like we we like depending on what kind of lessons we're running we'll do like stations um depending on how many goalies it's going to be and we have, at minimum it might be a skating warm and a skating station because Look, you get to 14, 15, 16, you can stop the puck. Yeah. Like, the, you, you need to keep skating and get better at skating. You need to be sharp. And this is an interesting thing, maybe, Jamie, and you've done some scouting, and I've done some scouting, and, and there is, for, for goalie coaches, they will look at the goalie's ability to skate, obviously. 
But for yeah. coaches who are less familiar with goalies, you know, who have just played the game and are familiar with hockey but aren't goalie spe- specialists, if they see someone like do one hard T push and a crisp stop, holy cow, do they love that? And we talked about this before. The coaches, yeah. they a lot, a lot of coaches that don't that evaluate goalies actually have no idea what they're talking about. Actually, a majority of them, and they just want to see who looks like a goalie. Do you and snap? Do you snap into your butterfly and do you push hard? And how hard? Okay, actually, you know what? But while you know, we're gonna this is gonna turn into Jamie's Jamie's rant of the day. It's actually, oh, I ranted about it in the in the group, in our group okay. chat, our goalie, our goalie coaches. Yep group chat and it was about uh one of our goalies went through tryouts and he got released and it's a, and i thought he's a good goalie i thought it's one of those ones where like if he made it i wouldn't have been surprised and if he didn't make it i wouldn't have been surprised yeah it um it happens and i think he's making good you know, he's made like significant progress and i'm happy with that so yep. keep making progress um, it's a process it's a process it's a process so i am looking at um the feedback the feedback, and this is from a coach. This is, to be fair, not a goalie coach. And if it is, separate anything else? That's separate separate separate. Separate. Okay. And so, good feet. Kept them active. Made small adjustment to angle changes. Yeah, I like that. I mean, like uh, as you should. As you should. Good reaction time. Good. Sure. Good angles on initial shots. Okay. So that means the feet feet are putting in the right spot. Needs to work on depth and cutting down the angle. The classic. Hey, Drew back. A, cl- a classic one, which is. Just contradictory to the other two things that he said he's doing well. Um, tends to drop a bit too early, too much on shot angles. Where staying up would be better, which I, I do get. You know, when you're small, when you're really like, when you're like about tw- four, 13 years old, like you're small. And we've talked about how sometimes the net's big, but also like, again, I don't know. I, I, it's, I it's like automatically discount the goes down too early comment. You can go if you're going down before the shot. That is too early. If you're going yeah. down on the shot, that is not too early. And I think, and I, you know what, he doesn't act, actually. I try to think of a time now, and I don't think he's actually gone down too early. We have been working, and if they said, you know, he needs to be more active with his hands, I would be like, yes, he does. I agree with that. <laughs> um, and then continue to work on recovery to second shot rebound. Absolutely, that's something we work on all the time. It's just that, like in, in intensity, kind of like battling through things. But what drives me crazy is that you have all like, like the two things that they say are really good, good angles. And then like one of the negatives is bad angles. And it's just like, it's, it's just, are we still talking about depth and angles? And I yeah, guess, yeah. Yeah. Well, and of course, you know, it just, that just kind of, that irked me in the group. It was more of like, that's like saying, yeah, like, you know, you go to a basketball player, really good, really good height. It's just too tall though. Yeah. It's too tall. Well, Jamie, I think that's really important. This is going to come out. It, this, this episode's going to come out like three days before uh, Ontario tryouts, at least in my area, are, are really starting. And so we did a tryout episode last year. If you want to listen to some tips and tricks for tryouts, go back and listen to that episode from last year. It's around the same time. Uh, maybe we'll even put the link in the show notes if you want to directly go to it. But just as a friendly reminder to everyone, tryouts are a nonsensical and non-logical process. And they're they're, they're not fun. As someone who probably the best way to put it is like sometimes you just things just happen. You're like that doesn't make anything. it doesn't. And you know what? Like we can you know you see we've seen to make tried episodes, but I was explaining this to a, a goalie parent because actually you know what it's cool now that I'm on the other side of things, and I like that I'm not like super involved in the team side. Like I'm not mm-hmm. in there. I'm not making all the decisions in terms of goalie things. I just coach, and so I can separate team stuff and goalie stuff. But I was talking to a parent, and first of all, they're like, hey texted me and said, oh, you know, my daughter's doing really well. I'm really surprised there's either six or nine goalies at tryouts. Crazy. And I, I texted back. I said, that, that's it? Yeah. And back in the day, there was like 18. Man, there were, tri- I remember trying tryouts with over 30 goalies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Over, so so when someone was like six, I was like, that's actually pretty good. Um, second thing is like, and like a lot of it was like, the, you know, talking to, to younger kids saying it's, it's okay for that competition. And actually something that popped in my brain was, was training with your competition mm-hmm. and how that can sometimes be a, a, a good thing or, or sometimes can be a bad thing. But I remember, um, so I remember when I, I started goalie later, when I was 12 and I tried out for AAA, I think my second year of playing, um, Hamilton Bulldogs, they had two goalies, it would have been Brock Novak and Marcus Del Conte were the guys my age. Probably guys like Jeff. Both guys who played junior hockey. Yeah. Dames you yeah, probably haven't heard in a while. And, um, so they were ahead of me and 
they were the goalies for forever and I could never crack the lineup because admittedly for the first bunch of years, they were just way better than me, but we would train it on ice pretty consistently. Like I would actually like make an effort to, cause like I, I kind of like looked up to these guys cause they were where I wanted exactly. to be. And I thought like, you know, after playing for two years, like these guys are so good and then they were good. And I remember like I would actively try to skate on ice at the same time as them. And so that's when we had like the four goalie system. And so yeah. they, those two would skate together and I would try to pop on and then there'd be a fourth. And I just remember that like I needed that. I needed to uh, some sort of goal post to see like, where am I? Like mm -hmm. how, how, how close am I? And eventually that gap began to close, 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 close. And eventually I overtook them and, and you know, I had to, I ended up playing AAA in a different center, but I ended up overtaking them and, and my career kept going. But I, I said to, as I was talking to the parent, um, cause he, he had asked, he's like, well, you know, we've been talking and maybe, I don't know, I don't want, I don't want them to be like, you know, at each other's throats or anything like that. And I said, I, I think it's really good. And everyone's going to have their own way of dealing with things. And sometimes people are going to, you know, sometimes people might take it positive or something makes it negative, but I think it's really good if you are fighting for a position to train or train with or or around or near the goalie that is in your position because one, it gives you a, like some sort of measurement tool and two, it also lights a fire under your and their butts. And I think, you know, it, it pushes each other. So like a rising tide, like, you know, lifts all ships, a classic, the classic thing. And I think it's completely true. Yep. If you have a bunch of goalies that are pushing for the same job, like you're going to get better. It's like, it's like, if you also go to the gym, you go to the gym with your buddies and everyone's like bench pressing as hard as much as they can. Like all of a sudden you hit a bench press PR yeah, because everyone wants to hit it, but you go out of the gym by yourself and you're like, not today, my shoulder hurts. You know, the envir environment is, is huge. It's, a, it's an enormous factor in, in your performance and your training and your competition and whether that carries over to a game and stuff. I mean, I think back on this and some of the times that I think I got the most out of our training was when we used to skate with a bunch of junior guys um, all at the same time, all guys who were not necessarily fighting for the same spot in a team, but were really all fighting ideally for spots in college or future positions, right? In theory, you know, we were all competing against each other in some way, shape, yeah. or form, right? And they never felt like, I don't know, it never felt like we were negative don't think about it you don't you, you don't know. think about yeah. like you as a yeah. 14 year old is competing as 18 year old but there will be a time where you will if you keep going you're going to cross pass yeah. and i yeah and yeah i it also like you know we were so fortunate to have like a facility like on ice growing up for not only for that competition and just having like a great access to like some in my mind some of the best coaches in the entire world awesome. um and just this whole like just system in order to be to become you know good goalies I, I i would qualify you and i both as pretty good goalies but farther than a large percentage of people go and play yeah um, I, I think that's a fair assessment i think it's a pretty fair assessment but also like i loved like you know i'd skate at six but i loved to staying for an extra hour or two my dad big thanks to my you know my dad for sticking around too but we'd watch the older guys We'd watch the junior A guys, even like guys that played junior C and D. Like when you're okay. 13, you're like, these guys are unbelievable. And all you yeah. want to do is be like these and just to be in an environment where you're with pro with there are goalies like, you know, like Dan Turbo was in the American League when, yep. when we were young. Um and, and still playing there. Talbot was coming through when yep. he was just coming off his his Alabama Huntsville year mm -hmm. and then going into uh going into pro in the East Coast in the American League. And like just being around like and like Viz was there, yep. World Juniors, and like it's just like what a great environment. And to be able to just see and watch these goalies. And I like, you know, I I'm trying, I'm trying to create something like that too. And I, you know, I mean when um some of my younger goalies come and like I know the older goalies skating after, I like to tell the parents and be like, hey, I think she's six to right. watch him. Just watch, just see what you see. And like it, you know, the, you know, your child's a couple of years off of this. But this is where we kind of want them to be, and, and this is where we want them to grow. Um, so I think I look bad, like man, were we ever privileged in that sense? Yeah. So what you're telling me is that you're going to have to build a facility in a uh, like business park that has like a half sheet of ice. Is what you're telling me? Just put it. Just put it in my apartment. Whatever. <laughs> my girlfriend will love that. Well, uh, no, I think that's important. I think that's a really important lesson. Is you need, and this is in life again. You know, the whole sport teaches you life lessons isn't always true but this is a pretty good metaphor where like if you want to be successful you need to surround yourself with people who are going to help build you up and help support you 
whether that is again like your coaching set but the coaches you work with you know it's just like an environment that you can learn from and compete and challenge and like do that in a i want to say healthy way that's the word i'm gonna yeah. use right like a supported way um at the end of the day right like we talked about this a few episodes ago um the NHL draft just happened right like congratulations to all the girlies who get picked you know about 55 percent of them will not play a single game in the ohl right and oh, like, another no. being part of that 55 percent yeah and another you know and 75 percent of them won't play more than 10 games or 20 games right and so it's a great accomplishment for those young goalies but again like it's a process and mm-hmm. you got to look at it a bigger picture too. all right jamie um let's change topics we yeah. talked about a little bit of the goalie environment let's talk about like again, I guess kind of the same thing. You want to talk about some long term trajectories, what it takes to get all the way to the top, the environment and your training history that's gonna lead you to professional hockey. So what we is going the magic number that I need to do. We are going to give you the formula to becoming <laughs> a professional goalie. And if you don't think that I'm gonna cut that bit of audio out and turn it into an Instagram reel, if you're crazy. Uh no, there's a bet. Was something that how many how many tens of thousands of dollars per year is the formula going to cost me? The formula it's what's the is, this is the server package for the formula. It's ten installments of a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, uh, and that's that. It's or it's just uh, ninety nine percent of your future NHL contract. Okay, so yeah, find another way right now. Yeah, um, no, there's a post circulating around that was sent sent to me by a screenshot because I am blocked by that person. Tough. Um, tough. Tough. I just hate. Just hate, I'm not hate blocked logic. because I don't engage. Hate logic. You like me, everyone. Don't engage angrily actually, on the internet. Yeah, I stopped. <laughs> I I actually stopped doing that. Um, there's a post saying that you need to make, you need to have. As was it? Can you can you correct it? Because you you saw, you had it. It's, so you, you need to make it. one million saves before you play professional hockey. And, well, so a few things on that is that's just a made up number. Uh, absolutely it's you it's a big round number yeah it's a big round number and it sounds sweet uh i'm glad what you know, is what yeah i was just i was just about to say like you know we, the ten thousand hour rule but i you know what i like so i i know you you're not a big fan of the outliers book i think it was just a good read no uh you're, you're not you're, no we're you're not like nope nope we're not we're not supporting that book on this podcast to be fair <laughs> to be fair to to good Canadian author malcolm gladwell he did revise his stance and saying that it takes 10,000 hours plus or minus 10,000 hours to be an expert, which is an outrageous statement and which is disregarded. It negates exactly. the whole thing. So it's saying that you can't, it's almost impossible to put some sort of quantifiable, you know, number on, on, on skill, but there tends to, you know, you have to, you can't deny that there tends to be a positive trend between the amount of work you put in during the results you get with most things. Yeah. So let me, let me clarify the science on the goalie science podcast here. There is research that shows in expert performers in sport that expert performers have done more practice than amateur counterparts. Now, a few hard cold facts. One, there's no discernible number, so you can't pinpoint a number of hours. Um, Another important point is that not all hours of practice are equal. I tell this story all the time. I once engaged in a practice in collegiate ice hockey. I was in college, competitive collegiate ice hockey. I sat on the bench for 45 minutes straight out of practice. If you go back in the research, a lot of the research is what we call retrospective. So people go back and they report how much practice they've done or how much training they've done over their lifetime. That's what a lot of the research is. And so most of the time it's like, how many hours of practice did you do? That technically is an hour of practice for me. I didn't do anything. I sat on the bench. Um, and so there was some important caveats. I am fortunate enough that the lab that I do research in, this is what we talk about a lot is skill development and learning. So those are my caveats. Um, when we make gross generalized statements, they lack nuance and pretty much any number around development, especially, especially, especially in the context of hockey, which is an under-researched sport just like it's not a grain of salt it's the entire shaker so jamie sorry continue no it's just like again and, and you know maybe we're just the, the two debbie downers in the hockey world but it's 
again, you could you can face a million shots, but if you don't say you don't really try, say you don't go down. It's a million shots. saves, Jamie. It's not a million, Sorry, a million saves. So I can stand there and get hit with a million pox, but it's mm. not that doesn't make you better. No. Also, like a million is a lot. It's a lot of saves. Do you want the do you want the breakdown? I yeah, you stats guy bad and give me the breakdown. Um yeah. So again, like I said, I think you know, again, to put some context into it, I think that big number is a social media clickbait. Oh, it, 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 yeah, but still. Yeah, but still. And so to give people an idea of how many shots a million is, cause I, I love this kind of stuff because it's just like numbers when they get big become so out of context and a, a million is a big number. So let me put it into context. Jamie, you started goalie very really late. Um, I started goalie a little bit earlier than you, but admittedly mm-hmm. late compared to some. Um, but let's say you started goalie when you were eight. And let's say you uh, finished your career in the CHL you don't play an overage year and you go pro at age 20 at age 20 in your 21 year so you're not playing your overage year you might be aging out of junior over in europe to go play uh, professional hockey over there 12 years of of hockey development you would need to make 84,000 saves per year now that's still a pretty big number so what does 84,000 saves looks like well if you're on the ice 250 days of a year, of a 365 calendar year, 250 is a lot. Um, that's a lot of days on the ice. That's a lot of days. That's a lot, a lot of days on the ice. When you were playing pro, I would argue that that might still have been higher than the number of days you were on the ice for a year. Very probably. Too. And also when you play pro, you your practices are very short. Yeah. So anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Assuming 250 ice sessions per year, you would need to make 333 saves per ice session. So those are the numbers. Yeah, that's, yeah. That seems like a lot. So you're, you're just not going to do that. And that's okay. Um, you Most practices, you won't face 300 shots, shots period, um, let alone 333 saves. This is, again, something that our group is hoping to quantify a little bit more is break down better accuracy around practicing games, what goalies actually do. So keep your hats on your head to keep your eyes peeled for some research down the line. Oh, hey, well, congrats to Ben for oh. for graduating and getting his master's. I haven't graduated yet, just oh, or about to graduate and get and then move on to PhD for Dr. Thanks. Ben. Dr. 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 Two. Yeah, Dr. Doctor. Dr. Uh, word. Ah, uh, yeah, but I don't really use one, so. Um, Do they just cancel if you actually just go back? <laughs> actually, yeah, it's actually a minus minus situation. <laughs> uh, but no, anyway, so part of all this is like when you break those numbers down, a million saves is so many saves. It's an unfathomable number of saves. It also doesn't matter. One save is not equal to another save. It's just something you shouldn't ever think about. And I think that's where I ultimately want that conversation to go. It's just we shouldn't put any more arbitrary numbers or ideas on people. Um, there's no number of times you need to skate per week, per year. Mm-hmm. All of that. We have no idea scientifically what's better and what's not. Um, so don't get don't get caught up in the hype. Be a little skeptical. Yeah. That, that's that's mainly the the biggest thing is like you know people people want something so bad like people want this and parents want this kids want this and everyone wants to do everything and when you and like when when there is a unfounded claim or anything like that it, you know it, you're taking advantage of people who just want something so desperately and that's and that's kind of a bummer because like there there like there isn't there isn't a way in any sport like no one knows the secret sauce it's nope. just it is what it is um you know are we good goalie coaches and can we help guide you in that direction? And can we make you better to some degree? I hope so. Absolutely. hundred percent. But can we guarantee to get you to the NHL? No, I, no, 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 no one can. Like no one can get you to, to pro hockey, but what we can do is can we get you better than yesterday? Yes. And then after 10, 12, 15 years of work, how maybe you're there and maybe you're not, but that's, you can't just quant like just, try to somehow quantify the unquantifiable and and that's a it's a bummer because then people are you know next thing you know people are gonna start counting their shots and like how many saves did that make today yeah and, and then it's just like oh well i you know i didn't make 300 saves today so that means tomorrow i gotta make 400 saves more. and it's just like no yeah. no 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 yeah. i think so i'm gonna give a, a shout out to again someone who i'm fortunate enough to get to work with um dr joe baker who spent the better part of his his entire career looking at the idea of talent and sport development and expertise. Um, he's got a great book. It's called The Tyranny of Talent. It got published last summer. I think people should should really go read it. I think um, we'll have to get Joe on. 
but I think his appraisal and his description of what like the pathway to expertise and the pathway to professional sport is really enlightening. And like the first thing, and we, we've said this on the podcast before, is if you tell someone that all they need to do is work hard and they can accomplish something, that's just wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the reality. It sucks. Like I wish hard work and determination was all you needed because we talked about this before and I spent, you know, the better part of a decade training with you, Jamie. And every single time we trained, you worked harder than I did. Like you just, you, you, you were more driven. You believed in the process. You did the extra stuff better than I did. Um, you know, was that the reason you ultimately were more successful than me? Probably a little bit. I mean, it um, contributed to it, but there's yeah. also like so many, there's like, other facts. I got lucky breaks and I was yeah. tall and all these like rant, like just things yeah. happen. Right. So this, yeah, the, the naturally I think the thing that's really interesting in that book by, by Dr. Yeah. Baker is that like, again, one of the big things is it's just disingenuous to say, you just have to do this, right? You need to do this. You, you don't need to do any of that. There's some things that we recommend that will help better. Is it better to work with a coach, an educated coach who understands the role of feedback, who understands motor learning, who understands drill design? Yes, that is more beneficial. Is it a huge benefit compared to someone who's not as good as that stuff? And it's not huge. It's probably a little bit of a benefit, but it's not as massive as you'd think. Humans and goalies and people were these amazing learning machines, right? Like we can learn in a lot of really bad conditions, mm -hmm. but we can also learn the wrong things in bad conditions and bad habits and all those things. But the point is everything we do is going to be roughly small benefits. So you should maximize those small benefits. That includes, you know, not getting bogged down by, you know, gimmicky recovery stuff or, you know, trying to have these outlandish goals of trying to do, you know, 500 saves or shots of practice session. Do you know, like, imagine doing 500 butterflies in a training session, Jamie, would you ever, would you wake up the next morning and be able to walk? It's just so no. many, but 500 is so many butterflies. That's just so many. Oh, speaking of butterflies, I remember I posted a video on Instagram where I just like, two of my goalies were like, so I saw a goal. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, it's also funny to read the comments. <laughs> it's so funny. They're like, wow, this is bad coaching. Those goalies are in the hip surgery. I'm like, first of all, these goalies, this is what, this is literally their warm up. Yeah. I was just videotaping their warm up. Second, uh, okay, tell me, tell me how, how, tell me who's, who's indicated for surgery. Please tell me. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, I, I think if we, if, if we knew that, I'd be so, I'd be so, rich. you'd be so rich. If there was a so predictive capacity for determining who would need surgery or who would even benefit from surgery at different times, Jamie and I wouldn't be sitting here right now. Yeah. Also, uh, then people were like, like, you don't need this. I'm like, I never said you did. Yeah. But also it's funny because there's a picture of that, uh, Askarov, 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 Askarov making a save on the Instagram that's floating around today. And he is in like a perfectly flat butterfly. Oh. And I'm just like, okay, but I, can we look, I think, look, I, again, if people don't know, like Jamie's goalies in this video are just doing like a little, like they're just doing a hip flare. Um, yeah. so I would, they're doing hip internal rotation. Uh, and then Pete, and also I got a lot, I put, I you, need you to make a log or post about it. I put a story saying like, Hey, like most people aren't, pro are going to get to this and that's okay because these goalies haven't, these goalies do mobility, but they don't like, they just, this is the way their hips are. Yeah. That's the shape of their hips. And so, and that's okay. And you know, can everyone get their butterfly wider? Yeah, probably. To a certain degree. To a certain degree, but not everyone's going to get this and that's okay. But yeah, I mean, I'll tell last, so I still got about 20 DMs saying, how can I do this? So two things. One, for the people who said like, oh, this is going to be problematic. Look at all the goalies in the NHL who can butterfly post to post. Literally like they do the, the, the double soft seal. Like, yeah. This, yeah. So soft, soft I, call it, I call it soft seal. Yeah. But soft seal implies they're not actually sealing the post. Like they are, their skate blades are on the post. Um, yeah. Which is a pretty original soft, soft, original seal. soft The original soft seal is like not connected to the post. So it just means a butterfly in the middle that you could shift side to side. Um, whatever. Doesn't matter. Whatever. Uh, now, now a lot, you, you're soft. I don't know. All I know is that you look at goalies who go through hip surgery, uh, yeah. some of them are not the most flexible goalies. No. And again, they're just like oh, inju oh. injury injury research, crazy. It's almost like we, there's no, there's sometimes patterns. There's no pattern. I, mean, I remember my point is what that point? back in the day um, when equipment, this is going to be the, the mid to late knots. So almost 15 years ago now, 15, 20 years ago, yeah. back in the day when goalie technology, goalie equipment technology really took off. Like the early 2000s, mid 2000s was the rise of goal ending, right? Like that really was like when goalies took over for that 15 year stretch. Um, 
But back in the day, I knew a number of goalie coaches who used to like force their goalies into like extreme pain to stretch into wider butterflies. Like I'm talking stories of goalie coaches and training staffs, like lighting candles and putting hot wax onto goalies' hips as they cranked their hips into, into rotation. Like those are things that people were doing 15, 20 years ago to try to create wider butterflies. Yeah, that that will cause injuries. That's a problem, right? So like that's, and again, like this is, I am by no means a gymnastics expert, but go look to see what some kind of training they do with the forced mobility in, in, gym, in young gymnasts to ensure that their bodies grows in a flexible way. Like that's the excessive stuff. That's the stuff where you... You know what I mean? Stretching for yeah. 30 minutes or doing a bunch of hip cars or whatever you want to do. And range it's not strength. So we, it's going to, like, you might, yeah. you're gonna, it's going to help. It's going to help yeah. strengthen. It's going to help for the range. But, like, again, I always say, like, pushing into pain, pushing into feelings of bone on bone. Like, these are, these, these are things you don't want to do, regardless of whose mobility program says that you can grind through it. Like, no, like, you got to just work within your ranges and then get, like, a little bit better. And then if progress stops, then, you know, Take a look. See, is this progress stopping because there is a full blown restriction, mm -hmm. or is this progress stopping because maybe it's time to change the mobility stuff? But like, not pushing into red pages because again, there's just like this idea that you need to be the most flexible goalie if you want to play pro. Again, I I broke in the my EGM uh, breakdown on Saturday. Uh, on, sorry, yeah, on Saturday, and I put it on the Patreon. Just shameless plug. Probably this afternoon, I did a hell of a breakdown. Not flex, like so stiff, but oh my God. And he's so good. Oh my God. What a but, but does he ever manage his depth? His depth is just, <laughs> he's just, look, he's been, he's the, this is, this is not a hot take. This is like statistically backed up. He's been like the best goalie in the world for the past five years, whether people agree or not. I don't really think it's much of a debate. Like over that entire sample, he has been the best goalie in the world. Easily. Um, people, please. I know you have other favorite goalies. Don't yell at me. I know you love Vassy and I know you love Shesty and Soroka. I love all those goalies too. They're great. They're really fun to watch play. Objectively, Connor Hellebuck has been the most valuable goal in the NHL yes. for the past five years. Um, so speaking, speaking of Russian goalies, um, the the Philly, what's his name? Uh, Ivan Fedotov. Yeah, very interesting. Tall. Yeah, very tall. 27 years old. Kind of clumsy. But, well, I, but, eight. but you know what? I like that he played. I to try to. I was explaining this to our goalie coach because he said the same thing. He's like, he's like, it looks really clumsy, and I said he kind of is. But I like that he plays within his system. He yeah. knows that he's. He probably knows he's not like the greatest skater. He's six foot eight. Like the most athletic. Like he doesn't fit that traditional Russian model of goalie. Six foot eight. Yeah, but he but just like, plays. He just plays to his strengths and his size and he's probably and his ability to read the game. And I'm like, I respect that a lot. Yeah, so do really I. Good. It just it just shows that like you know there's so many different types of goaltending. Yeah, there's a and this may be the last point, Jamie. I think we should probably start kind of we've, this will be, we we'll call this a bit of a mailbag episode, kind of this and that little. Uh, yeah, and we're gonna call it the secret to the secret sauce. Um, the, with the one the million 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 secret. Yeah, <laughs> but this amount of saves that you need to make. But like again, there's a lot of talk around. We've talked about robotic goalies and this and that, and like again, there are things that make you successful. Um, I don't, again, like we've disagreed around things being robotic. I think you look at the top five goalies in the NHL. I do not think they play the same at all. At all. No, oh, yeah. It's, it, there's, there are things that are the same, but like that's yeah, like but, saying both, both, both Nathan McKinnon and Connor David skate forwards. So they're the same. I know. Like, I, I know. And so right? I, I, I had a, I had a, one of the goalies we signed at Fox called me and he's like curious about my philosophy and i said look my philosophy is i work i work the goal in front of me like there are some non-negotiables like you gotta have to have good positioning and good tracking and be a good the best skater you can be but after that we like if you want to never use a half split sure but as long as you're not getting beat with shots outside your feet then it's not a problem but we but we need to play within the system that you can play and okay you're five foot eight we're yeah. gonna have that you can't play like my six foot five guys. No, that's okay. So I'm not gonna coach you like a six foot five guy. Yeah. So you adjust you again, you you look at the other skills. It's like, okay, maybe we do take that extra six to eight inches up on depth. Maybe we do take a more retreat style rush approach rather than like a, a flatter rush approach that a bigger goalie might use. Right? Those are all yeah. things that you just 
change, right? Like Jamie, you're six foot four. I'm six feet tall. We play rush chances differently. I know that because I was reminded of how I play them last week when I had to play a bunch of them, right? And it's like, as someone who has watched a lot of bigger goalies who just start maybe toes outside the blue ice and don't really have much of a retreat, just like a little baby retreat. Mm -hmm. Um, I quickly realized that I'm like a full C cut out guy because again, I'm six feet tall and yeah. I need a little bit more momentum. And uh, I, I was three foot four and not the greatest skater. So I could get away with taking a little bit more depth because I wouldn't be able to get there with my skating and the size of my legs would get me there. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's all that. Also, we're going to jump back. Last, last thing I was going to say this before we were talking about just the butterflies and the hip shape and yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. We'll, we'll do this. I'll take a video. Um, we can splice it together. Maybe we'll put it up as a secondary post to the, the, the audio from before. Uh, but when we, when I do like a hip assessment on myself or like when I did hip assessments when I was in chiropractic college, so we did them all the time. I have essentially what's called like almost like at less than five degrees of hip internal rotation, which is well below the standard, uh, a North American adult, which is somewhere between like 15 to 20, 25 I degrees. Think of, I think it's 15 to 25. 15 to 20 is what they say, but it, there should be more. Yeah, than yeah. The most it depends on shooting textbook you're reading. Yeah, exactly. And and what's the sample? Where's the data? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Anyways, yeah. I have not a lot. Um, my butterfly, even last week, is still like almost to the post. It's like my fear almost outside the post down the middle. Well, the um, thing is, people forget that like it's your, not, pad, your, your pads, like, Help you in the way the, the, the angle, butterfly yeah, and the angle to you, like, yeah, yeah, the goalie's in that post there. And, and you know what? Maybe what I'll do is I'll go in and, and splice that post on there. Yeah. Like, the, but those two goalies are have outla outlandish and outlier mobility. And yeah. it's funny because they, they're both their goalie partners don't have that. And it's just like both their goalie partners are playing at the same level and they're both good goalies. So, like, again, it doesn't really matter. But Ben. Uh, it's good to be back. Good to be back in the pod. Like I said, we're going to go every two weeks um, going forward until time is no longer of the essence. But we're going to try to get a bunch of interviews. I got possibly three lined up, Jamie. Got three, got three lined up. Possibly even the first in-person podcast of Goalie Science this weekend. We don't know. Maybe we're no, trying to be good. That's, can that's canceled immediately. Is it canceled? Yep. Okay. All right. Never mind. <laughs> well, we got free tryout skates. So I think I don't know. Never mind. Okay. But um, do some interviews, maybe get Booge back on because Booge is just the most, he's just a recurring guest. But um, if you are a goalie coach or you know someone who's involved in, in hockey at a high level um, and you think they'd be a really good guest on the pod, please shoot me an email. It's jamie at elitegoaliemethod.com. Um, shoot me an email, let them know who, uh, who we should talk to. And their contact information. And yeah. if it's someone that fits the profile of, of what we're kind of looking for in the goalie science podcast, we'll definitely consider it and reach out and continue to try to grow and, and make connections and also help inform people from different avenues and different approaches of coaching. Yeah. Overall, like I said, everyone, thanks for always listening. We appreciate all of you. We appreciate your support. We love having conversations with people who listen to the podcast and want to talk to us in person. So it was fun. So Jamie, people want to find more guys nah, you don't have you don't you don't even have to pump the page the patreon will be buzzing after wednesday Sunday. after Sunday. wednesday i gotta finish that course yeah and so wednesday. i have to go back home and that's 40 hours and in, in the hotel conference room so after that su under sunday patreon buzzing again so there's still i still schedule posts but we are going to be ramping it up so now's your chance going into the it's summer after, yeah. tri after tryouts, maybe take a break from hockey and then start diving into some, or maybe take a break off the ice and dive into some office Just learning. Get as smart. Jamie's can smart. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. As a reminder, everyone has a disclaimer. I do not receive any monetary support from Jamie for plugging him everywhere I go. Um, that is true. Maybe, or maybe if you keep supporting him, one day he'll decide. On one the day but I will take Ben eat. out to all you can eat sushi. Sounds lovely. Actually, I'll, I'll take you. I'll tell you. Sushi. Jamie, if, Jamie, if we did a podcast in person, then we can go get all you can eat sushi. <laughs> and then we should do like a hot tub episode. Chill in the room. Hot tub. All right. Just record it. All right. We're going to cut that part. Everyone, thank you so much for listening as always. Uh, we'll see you next time.